Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I wanna talk about the acidity of carboxylic acids and different factors that influence that acidity. So here is a fairly common exam question which you might expect to see on your next test where you need to rank your carboxylic acids based on their strengths from weakest to strongest or maybe from strongest to weakest or maybe you need to rank them uh, based on the PKA values. In a nutshell, all of those questions are exactly the same and they're asking the same thing. So whenever we're looking at the acidity of different molecules, typically what we are going to look at first is the conjugate bases and we are going to look at the stability of those conjugate bases. So the first thing that I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw my conjugate bases for each of those carboxylic acids and then I will remind myself about the factors that we typically look at when we are assessing the stability of our negatively charged conjugate bases. So those are going to be resonance, atomic size of atoms with a negative charge, electronegativity of atoms with a negative charge, inductive effects that might be present in the molecule, and finally we are going to look at the hybridization of atoms with a negative charge as well. Now, looking at these factors from top to bottom, I can see that from the perspective of resonance, all my carboxylic acids here have the same resonance stabilization, so there is no difference. On top of that, I can see that the negative charge is always going to be on the oxygen, so there is no difference between between the atomic size, electronegativity, or hybridization in this case either. So the only thing that is left for me is induction. Now, what exactly is induction? Well, in the simplest sense, induction is going to be the presence of the electron withdrawing groups and those electron withdrawing groups going to pull the electron density towards themselves via sigma bonds. So like here in my example, on the left, I have chlorine, which pulls the electron density towards itself. On the right, I also have the OH group that pulls electron density towards itself, but in the middle I have the methyl group, this ME, that pushes the electron density into the molecule instead of pulling it. So we would classify both chlorine and OH as our electron withdrawing groups, while the methyl group is going to be our electron donating group. And since in this case we are talking about purely inductive effects, the fact that both chlorine and oxygen have electron pairs is completely irrelevant. They cannot take those electron pairs and push those into the molecule because the there is no resonance involving those groups, which means that the only thing that we are going to care here is the fact that they are electronegative elements and they can pull electron density towards themselves due to their nature. But on top of being electronegative elements, the other thing that does matter here is the distance. And the closer your group to the place where the negative charge is, the stronger the inductive effect is going to be felt. So if I look at both of my molecules with electron withdrawing groups, the chlorine is on the second carbon from my carboxylate and from where the negative charge is, while the oxygen in the OH is on the fourth atom away from my negatively charged oxygens in the carboxylate. And that distance is significant. Every extra bond that uh, takes our electron withdrawing group and pushes that away from our place where the negative charge is, is going to be very significant. So the further away that group, the less influence it's going to exhibit on our molecule. And if it exhibits less influence, it will not be able to uh, stabilize that negative charge via induction effectively because it's too far away. Which means that looking at all of my three conjugate bases here, I can say that the one with the chlorine here is going to be the most stable one, while the one with the methyl group is going to be the least stable one because we do not have any extra stabilization effects and electron donating group is going to push electron density towards the carboxylate which already has negative charge and really doesn't want to have extra electron density. And I will remind you that when it comes to our acid base properties, strong acids give weak or stable in other words bases, which means that our most stable conjugate base comes from the strongest acid, while our weakest acid going to give us the least stable or the strongest base in this case. So this way our ranking is going to start with the molecule B as our weakest carboxylic acid, 
then we have molecule C, and finally we have molecule A as our strongest acid in this case. Easy enough, right? Now, where things do become a little bit more tricky is where the resonance and inductive effects clash with each other. Let me explain what I mean. Typically, we are going to see that in the case of aromatic carboxylic acids, so let's look at these three molecules over here. Now, in order to compare the acidity of these carboxylic acids, I could compare the pKa values. And I will remind you here that the lower pKa value is, the stronger the acid is going to be. So my very first acid over here, the pKa value is going to be somewhere around 4.5. The next one has a pKa value of about 4.1, which seems logical because our oxygen, our electron withdrawing group, is closer to our carboxylic acid, so it uh, exhibits stronger inductive effect. But then when I look at my third carboxylic acid here, I have a little bit of a problem, because now my group, uh, which exhibits strong inductive effect, is the closest to my carboxylic acid, and yet, it seemingly exhibits less of the effect, that doesn't make any sense, until we think about the resonance in these molecules. Now, the electron pairs that we have on the oxygen of this OCH3 group is going to be relevant, because now those electrons can participate in resonance within the ring, changing the electron density within the aromatic molecule itself. So, in the first case, if I think about all different resonance structures, I will see that these positions in my molecule are going to have the heightened electron density, they will have a partial negative charge, so uh, this group is not going to be exhibiting any stabilization effect on our uh, carboxylic acid, because it is going to be generating a partial negative charge right next to my carboxylic acid. In the next case, if I think about the resonance, I am going to have the negative charge on these atoms. And here, my negative charge, or my partial negative charge, I should say, is not going to be directly next to my carboxylic acid, so carboxylic acid will start feeling some of the inductive effect. But in my last case, where I again have my resonance structures pushing the electron density towards the same positions as in the first molecule, I still don't see the uh, pKa value of roughly 4.5 like I saw in the first example, because now, due to its proximity, my OCH3 is actually going to exhibit a significant or more significant inductive effect, and that an inductive effect is going to be felt by the uh, carboxylic acid, which means that overall it is not as weak as the uh, first example, but it is not as strong as the middle one due to the resonance effects and inductive effects essentially working against each other and clashing in this case. So, in the case of the regular carboxylic acid, we are looking at purely inductive effects. In the case of aromatic carboxylic acids, we are going to be looking at both inductive and resonance effects at the same time. And remember that resonance effects are typically more powerful than inductive effects, so we are definitely going to be taking them into consideration. And that's all you need to know to rank your carboxylic acids. So if you like this quick review, boop the like button, check out this video next, and I will see you next time.